And when I want to look at, when we look at the definition of etiquette, it's simply being code. It means rules. And it, it means code and rules uh, of politeness, accepted and proper behavior in society or in social groups. In other words, it's just saying etiquette just tells you how to behave, what you have a right to do. Mm -hmm. and, like and for me, I am concerned. I am concerned that etiquette and protocol have gone out of style and it is no longer something that we uplift and we uphold. And, and I want to apologize to the younger women, for us older women, who did not teach and train like we should have taught and trained. Ah. Let, let me stand for the older women. I apologize wow. to you for that. Mm. Because what I'm seeing in public grieves my spirit. Mm, my God. Because I know it came out of the private place. Mm. That makes sense to you? Watch this. Shoot, give me the next one. And I'm sorry you are my remote control. I lost it somewhere. I have no idea where it is. So Trudy, uh, Green, uh, everybody look back there at Trudy. That's my spiritual daughter. And I really get confused. Sometimes I call her Taylor. I call her Favor. I came out of my house and she was waiting for me. And I referred to my husband as her father. I said, well, your daddy said, I looked at you and I said, that's not your daddy. So, <laughs> that's really how much she's part of my family. So I want you to love on her because Trudy keeps me here, there, and everywhere. So watch this. Trudy, go ahead and get to us. Your private is showing. We're going to move quickly because I'm going to slow down at the end. Go a little bit further. Trudy, watch this. Watch this. Go a little bit. Oh, I had to add this some extra. Here we go. That's Titus 2. The beauty to my right is my daughter, Taylor. The beauty on the bottom, thank you, Pastor Erica, who nurtured my, my beauty for three years while she was in Baton Rouge. The bottom is her baby, Favor. Now, if I must say so myself, can I shift and get in the flesh? That's three good looking people, yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Titus 2 says this, and I want you to grab hold of this because it's going to make sense to you as I go through this session. You have your big girl panties on? Just grab your, grab your elastic real quick. Make sure you have. Yeah. All right. And it's going to be some points, brethren. I'm going to ask you to just put your fingers in your ears so I can go through that little part that I got to go through quick. I'm going to wink at you and you're going to catch it. Watch this. Older women, that be me. Mm -hmm. I have an assignment on my life just for the mere fact that I'm older. Mm. You, you, you got that? See, just because see. I'm older. Yes. Watch what it says. It says must. Must. Doesn't make it optional. Doesn't make it optional. I must do training to the younger women. Mm. Mm. And what am I training them to? Love their husbands and their children. To live wisely and be what? Pure, work in their homes and to do what? To do good and to do what? Be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not what? <laughs> so, in my Naomi season as a Titus II woman, one of my assignments is to make sure that any young woman in my care understands that she is not to bring shame to the glory of God. Mm. So God has given me a license that when I see something, I can pull her off in private and I can teach her and train her so that she can function better in public. Yes! Ooh. Yes! That's my assignment. So let me tell you something, young ladies. Don't get frustrated. Some of us are going to come in love. Some of us are going to come the wrong way. Some of us come and stab and cut you and kill you and wound you. And you don't want to have nothing to do with the Lord Jesus or old women no more in your life. I apologize for that too. So to my older seasoned sisters who have the same assignment that I have, we stroke them gently. Yes. One. Mm -hmm. And two, my mother is the wisest woman that I know. My mother said to me, make sure you don't forget what age you were, the things you were doing at that age. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. At that age. Mm -hmm. While you're training. Watch this. Come on, Trudy. Watch this. Let me show you. Let me show you. What happened in private? You my helpers. In private is the prototype. 
That, that's the example, the model, the pattern. In private is where you practice. In private is where you perfect it. In private is where the protocol is set. Mm -hmm. Everybody got that? Yes. So I practice before I perform. Mm. Huh? I perfect it before I produce. A protocol is set before I take the stage and display what I've learned. Mm. Uh -huh. You can wait for your private is showing. Your private, private is showing. Show. Keep going, keep going. Watch this, watch this. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, watch this. In private lessons should take place. Mm -hmm. Taylor under my kid. As a matter of fact, today, uh, Taylor said to me, she said, Mama, I appreciate everything you taught me. Well, you know I'm about to faint, right? I'm just going, Lord. She said, I appreciate everything you have taught me. That's my assignment. That's your assignment, seasoned, the seasoned. So today I want to quickly hit you with some things and put some things on your mind so that in public, you feel a little bit better. Mm. Okay, there's an expression that says, don't judge a book. But what do we do? Judge, judge a book. book by itself. Am I right about it? Yes, ma'am. And, and, and I want to, you to process that for a second because we judge a book by its cover and we really can because I can only judge by what you're showing me and what you're saying. But it lets me know that something is going on inside of you. I study people. I said, Lord, show me. Show me the audience. Yes. That's what I've been praying. Show me, show me. And then he had to get up. I couldn't sit down. I had to go stand in the back. And I'm looking at the audience. Show me the audience. And believe it or not, I can see you. Yes. I'm going to say it again. Mm. I can see you. Right. Watch this. So in private, I teach you how to greet people. Keep going, Trudy. In private, in, keep going, Trudy. In private, I, I, I teach you about an inside voice. I teach you about mobile phone usage. Now, I'm going somewhere. Keep going, keep going, Trudy. I te teach you about your appearance, social media, media. Good man, stop right there. I teach you about your speech. Now, watch this. As a mother and a grandmother and a midwife by nature, I teach these things because I know how it works. By profession, one of my professions, I'm a consultant. So I sit at the table and I prep people for their careers. And I teach them how to present themselves when they go for jobs or when they go to school. That's what I do. I get paid. I actually get paid to do that. And I promise you, they come back to me and tell me it works. Watch this. So I know I'm functioning in my gift. Watch this. Your greetings, how you greet people. Watch this, watch this. An inside voice. We don't always have to be loud. Mm -hmm. The older people used to say, uh, be seen and not I heard. heard. Don't take that the wrong way. That's not saying you can't voice your opinion or you don't have an opinion. But you don't have to, you don't have to be loud. Uh, mobile phone use, you don't have to be in the store on aisle eight telling me what's going on and I'm on aisle 10. You're out of order. You're out of order. Okay, watch this. Appearance. Appearance, because we're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me tell you. Let me, let me. <laughs> and the meditation on my other art be acceptable. All right. Did you not just read Ephesians two ten? <coughs> Excuse me. It says that we are what masterpiece. masterpiece. God's masterpiece. And you had nerve enough to repeat after me. I'm God's masterpiece. I'm God's handiwork. I'm God's design, right? Amen. Well, then we are a reflection yes, yes. of Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some stuff gonna come up on the slide. Let me hit it right now. Well, you might have to come downstairs and go to the door with your keys in your hand. <laughs> your appearance matters. A rap camp is, is never inside. 
bathroom material, table manners, keep going, keep going. Place settings, keep going. Cool, calm, and collected, keep going. Three Bs, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Why? Because you 
calling me right. material. Right. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. I gotta get to this. Come on, watch this. Enunciation slips, holes, we recovered all of that. How many, how many CBC ladies now you done bought a slip since I told you you need to work? Just raise your hand there. Yep, see? Yep, yep. Go get your smell. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to see your eye. And a foundation. That's what those people used to call that foundation. <laughs> Today we say Lord. I'm talking about etiquette. Oh. I'm talking about etiquette. Wow. Because you are his masterpiece. You represent the Father. I want you to say all together, one, two, three, I want you to say, I love you. One, two, three, go. I, I love, love you. you. Thank you. I feel so much better. Okay, watch this. We cover that. Poise and posture. Everybody stand quickly. Stand quickly. Stand quickly. I'm going to get on the stage. Stand quickly. When you walk in, you walk in with confidence. You don't walk in with your head down. You walk in with confidence, not arrogance, but you walk in with confidence. You don't walk in like you concede or anything like that. You walk in like, I have a seat at the table and I belong in the room. Everybody got mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then when you get to your seat, you don't just plop down. You politely get in front of your seat. You look to make sure the seat is there. You take your right leg and you put it back. It will brush up against the seat. You politely sit and slide yourself back down. You ready? One, two, three, practice, go. We already know this. You can bounce over this. I love you. She might get up to that one again. Oh, yeah. See? See? That's etiquette. That's ladylike. Ladylike. You get that? Your poise. Mm -hmm. How you stand. How you speak. Your enunciation. Your pronunciation of words. All of that is representative of who you are mm. and what you do in private. Mm. It's going to show in public. public. Am I right? Yeah. Keep true. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, please iron your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the dryer is not in the <laughs> Mm -hmm. Why? 
because we judge a book by its cover. By its cover. And people, I promise you, people treat you. They shouldn't, but it's real. People treat you according to how you present yourself. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, on language, I didn't cover this. Um, my mother used to say there was nothing worse than a woman with a potty mouth. Mm -hmm. And she would say she has a shortage of vocabulary. So I promise you, if you have the potty mouth, I don't, no confession, this is not confession time. <laughs> Develop your vocabulary. Because what we think is this, in order for me to get somebody's attention, I need to curse them out. Because some people don't respond until you go low. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get that mindset. Why y'all looking at me strange? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Some people actually believe that. Mm -hmm. But I promise you this, in the words of the older and the wise, you can catch more bees with honey <laughs> than you can with venom. The Bible says a soft word turns away wrath. wrath. So don't make yourself, you're not a trash can. Don't make yourself appear that you are trashy by what comes out of your mouth. mouth. Somebody say your private is showing. Your private is showing. Because you're doing it in private, that's how come it comes up in public. <laughs> mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. On country say I love you. I, I love, love you. you. Thank you. I just need that affirmation. Girl, you don't know I just need that affirmation. Let's go. Let's go true. Oh wait, stop. Wouldn't y'all say go back true? Wouldn't y'all say those two young ladies look marvelous? Yeah. Don't they look boss? Yeah. They look boss. Yeah. They look confident. They feel like they're feeling good about themselves, how they're presenting themselves. Why? Because they took care of themselves where? In private. Now let me show you something. Let me show what I'm talking about this. Go ahead, go ahead, Trudy, please. Christian conduct. Believe it or not, it rolls over. Your private rolls over and becomes part of your conduct. Your private becomes part of your Christian conduct. If you're not checking yourself in private, we're going to see it in your Christian behavior. Mm -hmm. Look at this scripture. This scripture is so powerful. In Proverbs, it says, as a ring of gold in a swine's snout, in the snout of a, a pig, a gold ring. Like a ring of gold in a swine's snout, so is a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. Mm -hmm. Let me break it down for you. What is that hog going to do? Uh -huh. Go eat some slop, go roll in the mud, have the nerve to rinse off, and go do it all over again. Mm -hmm. So the scripture is saying this beautiful woman who has no tact, who has no good judgment, who's just making or uh, just doing anything without good sense and using discretion is just like that hog, although he has a gold ring in his snout, he's just going to waddle and waddle and waddle. That's the woman who lacks discretion. I didn't say it, the Lord said it. So we want to make sure our Christian, now, now wait, watch this. Watch this, you all. Every scripture that I have selected, I talked about it in private. Did I not talk about behavior in private? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You see how it's rolling over? Every scripture is rolling over into the Christian conduct. Watch this. Let's go to the next one. Please, truly. <coughs> Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. That's in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. Why? Because if you're lacking discretion, you're just like that hall with that gold ring in his snout. And people are looking at you saying, Look, you, you, honestly, do you think you get this level of respect? Because guess what happens? You do it, people are going to do it in front of you. Mm -hmm. You share the dirty jokes, they're going to say the dirty jokes in front of you. And what I've discovered, especially when you're working around men, they test the waters to see how far they can go. So they throw you a little bait. If you bite, 
they go a little bit deeper and deeper. And the next thing you know, you say, well, why are you saying that? Well, you started that with me when we first started working together. I didn't know I had boundaries with you. Mm -hmm. Is it helping somebody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch this. Let's go to the next one. So ladies, somebody said to yourself, say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. And say, say to yourself, I am not a garbage can. I am not, not a garbage, garbage can. can. So I don't talk like trash. Talk, talk like, like trash. trash. Man, look at this one. Avoiding a fight is a mark of honor. Amen. Avoiding a fight is a mark of honor. Only fools insist on quarreling. Mm. Let me tell you something. The scripture talks about some things you just let it go. Mm -hmm. Some things you let go. I taught school for 10 years. After that, I subbed for a period of time. And I would get so upset with the number of parents, women, who would come to the school carrying on. Just, we, we couldn't get through to them to make them understand. You're coming to tell me how wonderful Junior is, and I'm trying to tell you, Junior flipped the desk over and hit another child. <laughs> but you're coming to tell me how wonderful Junior is to the point where you are going to use profanity, you're going to insult me, and you're almost threatening me. That's not what we do. That's not what we do. Not as, not as Christian women. Do we get mad? Yes. I always say, Lord, you gave me that emotion, that feeling. But do we? Yes, ma'am. But it is how we handle situations. My mother taught me this. She said, you always keep control by remaining cool, calm, and collected. Oh, y'all got the same mama I got. <laughs> she said, because the minute you blow a gasket, you give them control. Uh -huh. You give them control and you lose their respect. The minute you do it. Somebody just said it's guilty. Guilty. We've all been, we, haven't we all done it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't stand up here perfect. Okay? So the scripture is telling us fools insist on quarreling. But your mark of honor is when you can let it roll off your back and walk yeah. away from it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And just let it, a fool will stand there all day long and, and act like a fool, but don't act like a fool with them. Watch this. Keep going. Keep going. Please, truly, thank you. She makes covering for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Now, you know that's a Proverbs 31 woman where the mother is literally asking her son who can find this woman. Mm -hmm. But this woman is concerned about how she what? Mm -hmm. Looks. All of us in here have a different swag, am I right? Mm -hmm. All of us in here slay differently, right? Yes. And, and let me tell you something. If I was standing up here in front of you, and I had on my pajamas because it's cold outside, and my big, big old fuzzy slippers, <laughs> and instead of having a, uh, whatever this is on top of my head, like somebody killed somebody pulling an apple or something on top of my head, <laughs> <laughs> if, if I had my, uh, my stomach bonnet, or my do rag, be honest with me. Be honest. Would you be able to receive as well? Amen. Would you have judged me by my cover? Amen. You would have. Would you have looked at me and thought, this lady's not even professional? Amen. Am I right? Amen. Well, why don't we feel the same way about ourselves? Oh, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on. Why do we not feel the same way about ourselves? And women, we, we slick with it. A woman may not come up to you and compliment you. My mother was a great complimenter, so she taught me, it's nothing for me to walk up to another woman and tell her, baby, that's some bad shoes you got on. Girl, you know you wearing that dress right there. You go ahead and leave that at the door, and I'll meet you and go and pick it up and put mine on you because I want what you got. It is nothing for me to compliment her, but I learned this from my mother. But this is what we do. When somebody looking good, my daughter calls it scaling. We, we, we don't even we, we not say anything, but we're going to scale them. You know, you know, she get that look. You know what I'm saying? So you already, you've already affirmed me. You've already affirmed me. You didn't say a word, but your body language and the way you looked at me told me, oh, I'm working it, I'm working it. I'm working it, I'm working it. I'm working it. I'm working it. Am I right? Yeah. Well, if, if I'm having admiration for someone else, why can't I see that for myself? myself? All right? Keep going, Trudy. Keep going. We're almost done. 
Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and to do what? Your own business. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Make it our ambition. Our Christian conduct is to make sure we're busy working with our hands, but we're minding our own business. business. And I find that is why we get on social media. Because we want to get in other folk business. So then when I get in the business, I can screenshot it and I can send it to you so you're not in the business. Everybody <laughs> say guilty. Guilty. Been there, done that. And I say, yeah. 